being here. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> at this time in the morning. Our second presenter is Daniel Manuel, graduate student at Oklahoma Gamma from East Central University in Region 2. And another interesting topic, respectful communication reduces barriers. Respectful communication reduces barriers. I'm Daniel Manuel from East Central University in Ada, Oklahoma. Have you ever had an experience that sparked a change? And have you ever followed the dream that was kindled by that spark? Well, I have. And have you ever learned things following that dream that you never considered before, but you were so glad that you did? Well, I have. Now, look, kind of brothers and sisters, I've been on a journey. This journey has taken me to East Central University, where I became an Alpha Chi member, which has brought me here. This journey began at the movies. In the spring of 2007, my wife and I watched a faith-based, low-budget movie called Facing the Giants. Whenever we left the theater, I told my wife, I believe God has called me to be a coach and a teacher. What a journey this has been. In the Fall of 2007, I resumed a college career at the age of 34 in pursuit of an education degree. Now in the spring of 2008, I challenged myself even more by seeking a minor in communications. I didn't need this minor, but I felt there was enough value in the communication classes that would be beneficial in my pursuit of an education degree. In the spring of 2009, I was inducted into Alpha Chi at East Central University. And in fall of 2010, I became our local president, and it was the same semester that I graduated. Now here I am today, a graduate student who is proud to be part of Alpha Chi. Now I'm not just here today to talk about myself. I'm here to share with you about one of my collegiate experiences of value. I'm here to share an experience that I believe can be of value to others. In the fall of 2009, I took a class titled Theories of Human Communication. Now in this theories of human communications class, there was a research slash term paper. Now for this project, we had to choose one theory from our text and apply it to some type of phenomenon. And the professor, he gave us the latitude in our project and that we were able to apply this theory to really anything of interest to us as long as he approved it. And I chose the, to apply to evangelism and mission work because those were areas that, that I was passionate about. Now there are basically two approaches to communicate theory. First, the objective approach, it can be very rigid and it may be non-applicable in some situations. Now the objective approach, it definitely has merit and it definitely has value because there are some things that are black and white. For me, some things that are black and white, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's not going to change for me. You know, there's also a singular truth associated with objective approaches. But objective approaches in theory and in especially communicative theory can leave people feeling kind of restricted, almost as if your hands are tied. Now the coordinated management of meaning is an interpretive theory, which it can be much more flexible and it can be more useful in many situations. There can be multiple meanings for words, there can be multiple meanings for phrases, and there can even be assignable values for different texts and different phrases and things that we say. And this can make it much more flexible in how we use it. Now, as a social constructionist theory, CMM traces its roots to the work of American pragmatist Dewey and the later Wittgenstein. Social constructionist theories consider how social phenomena developed into social context. Now, according to Pearson Cronin, persons in conversation are co-constructing their own social realities and are simultaneously shaped by the worlds they create. As I'm in conversation with someone, even if we don't realize it, we're both creating our own social realities. And what's important for me to remember, the person that I'm in communication with, they may not be creating the social reality that I want them to. And I may not be perceiving the same social reality that they want me to. So, especially in evangelism and mission work and sharing faith, it's important for me to realize that because I can very easily be misinterpreted and misconstrued, and it's also important that I remember that so that I don't jump to conclusions about what someone else might mean, and that I'm more aware of the possibilities of things that they might mean. Now, one thing that's good about this is 
they can achieve, persons in conversation can achieve coherence through common interpretation of their stories told. They can achieve coordination by meshing their stories live. Now, whenever we begin to understand each other's stories more, we begin to mesh more, we begin to understand the other person more. Now, dialogic communication, which is a component of CMM, is learnable, is teachable, and is contagious, and it can improve the quality of life for everyone. And here's how it can improve the quality of life for everyone. It can improve the quality of life because dialogic communication is a very selfless communication. It's communication with an intent, and if I'm practicing dialogic communication, I'm trying to provide something valuable to say. And not only am I trying to provide something valuable to say, I'm trying to be a better listener. I'm trying to hear what the other person is telling me, and not just their words, not just their accents, not just how they're dressed, not just cultural norms and things of that nature that could distract me from what they really mean. I like how Randall Rose put it in his article in a 1985 copy of the Western Journal of Speech Communication. CMM is a practical theory that can be applied to many situations and has value for many that desire to improve their understanding of others and increase the effectiveness of communication. Pierce and Cronin crafted their theory with flexibility and that its rules guide instead of govern. And this flexibility is one of the things that I really like about this theory. I like the flexibility in this theory. Contrast with objective theories, CMM doesn't claim to have unchangeable principles of communication that hold true in all situations for all individuals. And it's very apparent that we're not all the same. We have many differences. And to be aware of these differences, and especially to be a sensitive, to be sensitive to these differences, is very important. You know, especially in sharing issues of faith. If I'm sharing issues of faith, it's because I care, and I would really like for that person I'm in communication with, I would like for them to hear what I have to say. But I can't just beat them over the head with a Bible. I have to be sensitive in my approach, and I need to hear them also. And I've learned that everyone is not like me. In a recorded interview with the author of my text, Barnett Pierce stated that we don't have to accept others' beliefs just to communicate with them. And that goes for not just sharing faith, that can go for anything of people being different, issues of abortion, you know, sexual preference. I mean, the list could go on and on. You know, we have many differences, but we can respect others. Now, to apply this theory, you know, I'll give you an example here of words can have different meanings. Some people hear the term wasp, they think of the red wasp there. Some people hear the term wasp, and they think of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant little boy right there in front of the Baptist church in Ada, Oklahoma. <laughs> so terms can have different meanings, and just another example that, that we are not all the same. Now, to kind of integrate CMM with globalization, international missionaries today have so many different kinds of opportunities available because of globalization. The world really is becoming a smaller place. You know, social networking, you know, computer communication. It's easy for me to learn about an area maybe before I go there if I was to do international mission work. And a quote here, missionaries today should have less problem crossing between cultures. Today one can chat about a whole number of subjects from the X-Files to the latest going on in DC. And that's so true. And not that the X-Files is part of CMM, but sometimes just breaking the ice can foster a, a positive communicative experience with somebody. Now to integrate technology in CMM, here's my example. I went on a short-term mission trip to London, England. And if you've ever been on a subway, especially in London, you know that sometimes you're, you're cramped in. And one thing about being in London, I can say I had the opportunity to share my faith with people from every continent on the globe except for Antarctica. And here's an example. Here's some maps where I met a man from Nigeria. And at first, this gentleman, he really didn't want to talk to me, but he was forced to sit next to me on the subway. He didn't understand that. So I asked this gentleman, I said, well, where are you from? And he said, Nigeria. I said, okay. So I pulled out my iPod, and I pulled up Nigeria on my Atlas app, and I said, show me in your country where you're from. Show me in your country where your family lived. So all of a sudden, this guy went from not wanting to talk to me 
to all of a sudden he was almost sitting in my lap trying to look at this map. Part of it was he maybe he'd never seen an iPod touch. I don't know, but it kind of fostered a positive communicator experience. And then I asked him about his family, and then I brought up the United States, and then I pointed out, I said, well, this is where I live. This is where my family lives. And I briefly told him about my family. And so that kind of allowed me to kind of have an opportunity to share with him things that were important to me because I first showed him respect. And in this project, I generated and I administered a survey. You may not be able to see the questions from there, but this survey was handed out only to people that I knew were believers or professed believers. I mean, that was the intent, was to ask questions to, to believers. And it asked questions such about how important do you believe that communication and communication awareness is. And it was really interesting to see how a mission before and after mission trip, people's views were on the importance of communication. It was also interesting to see that just this awareness survey, how much it changed people's views on being culturally aware, just the survey. As a follower of Jesus, what I believe is rigid, but I can be flexible and respectful in how I share what I believe. My final element of CMN, cosmopolitan communication. Coordination despite differences. It promotes peaceful communication between those with extreme different views or beliefs. To sum it up, really, I may not always get my way, but through respectful communication, I improve my chances of at least being heard. And I'll conclude today by saying that regardless of background, cultures, any general or unique traits that we possess, we all have an opportunity to improve the world in which we live by applying these theories of the coordinated management of meaning. Thank you. Question. Yes, ma'am. Did you, you were respectful to people you met, but did you find people who were not respectful to you? I found people that were very disrespectful to me. And I tried to just react in a positive way and show them just as much love as the people that were glad to see me. 